individuals, and when you get to your team, that uh, you realize that you can't do everything yourself. And so pretty much today is going to go about uh, what sort of planning you should start considering. Uh, I would uh, uh, take my clients through a workshop. I'm going to give you a few tips on that. And then we're going to look at, um, I suppose I should just do this. OK, so we're going to look at uh, the reasons for you guys' businesses. There, there's two things I wanted to highlight there. Why you would plan. We'll look at what strategic alignment means. We'll then go to team dynamics. Um, I have a thing which I call the black pot theory, which will help you um, put your teams together. Um, and then there's a little thing that's quite fun called bots. And then we'll look at the motivation of people in the team.
And you need people to interact with the systems in order to come to the results. So what we find is while we look at vision and purpose as important, and we look at the values and culture of the individual leader and or the team, we look at the product or service and is it sustainably competitive? And the, uh, this is a, just this part up is about a two day workshop. The strategic objectives are the primary, the 10, 20 year uh, objectives that you want to achieve in your business. Now, the one can, you can be working on your strategic objectives and recognize that your vision is actually off. Or maybe you want to say that your objectives aren't actually aligning with your vision. And so you go round and round and round with the, your team or with the consultant until you've got those four above the line nailed down. The next step would be to look at what are the operational goals in order to achieve those strategic objectives. Because if those objectives are aligned to your vision, these goals will be aligned to your vision. At the same time, you're going to look at your people and what sort of behavior do you need to achieve the values and culture, and then you know that that behavior is aligned to your vision. So notice when all these things are aligned, you end up with results that you wanted in the beginning. At least if you fall short of those objectives, at least you'll know that there's um, it's in the right direction. You know what I'm saying? You're not way off base. So typically in our planning, you want to be in a place where it's not hard work. Or at least it's nice work. And we'll speak about that a little later. But knowing your specific passion or purpose to get that is what is your holy discontent? What is it that you really hate that your product or service fixes? Or um, what issues does your service or product resolve? Sustainable competitive advantages, what must I become excellent in? So in your little business, what are the things that you really need to be excellent in? And then you look at what is your cat, uh, what is your economic engine, which is your cash. Because you could be great in those things and have no cash and you've got no business. Okay? If you've got no passion about what you're doing, you've got no business. And we'll hear a little bit about that later. Right, so what's the black pot theory? Okay, so black box got three feet, right? Just coming up there, right? So if you look at that black pot, what could happen to this pot if this leg wasn't there? It's going to fall over, right? What happens? <coughs> Sort of to glean, right? Okay. So the idea is, is that a business is like a black pot. Uh, I used to be an architect a long time ago, so excuse the point. <laughs> right. Okay. So. Yeah, you've got two pots, okay? In this case, there's only one leg, or there are only two legs, and so, this, and, and so this pot is lying on its side. So, if there are contents inside this pot, what do the contents look like in this pot? Now, the contents in this case indicate customers, or cash, or whatever the major driver in your business is. And if you continue filling a pot that's standing upright, you can fill it to the brim. But when you fill this pot that's lying on its side, you can't fill it because this keeps running out. And so this is speaking about planning um, a significant sufficiency in your business. Okay. So if you're running short on, on a leg in a pot, it's either going to be leaning to one side, it's going to let contents fall out. And so if your business is leaning to one side, your customers or your cash is just going to run out. 
So what are those three legs in a, in a business? The first is a technical leg. Now the technical leg is something like, um, shall we say, let's go back to the carpenter, really good at doing woodwork. He starts a business and he's going to do a furniture manufacturing business. Now, if he just made furniture, he's really good, and he just made a whole lot of furniture. But they're just going to stand in his little workshop there, you know, because he's not moving them out into the market, right? So what else is he going to need? He's going to need marketing and sales. So now, he's making furniture. He's able to promote his furniture and sell the furniture. But he's not keeping record of what he's doing. And so what else does he need then? Finance and admin. Okay, yeah, so now I'm going to tell you a little bit about entrepreneurs. I specialize in entrepreneurship, uh, specifically in technology. And um, over the last 15 or so years, I've realized the following. In most cases of entrepreneurship, if someone wants to go and start something, they've got two of these legs in place. They never have three, unless they bring somebody else in. So they've always got to hire in the skill that they don't have, because otherwise their pot is going to be hanging over to the side. Okay. Now, in most cases, Entrepreneurs have those skill sets. In most cases, they're normally technically strong and they're able to actually market or sell their goods. And that leaves a big hole for them. They don't often fill this leg because they base their business on turnover, not on the management of resources, which is what administration is. Finance is the use of the money. It's not actually accounting. Accounting is an administrative uh, function. Finance is the use of cash, okay? or the ability to gain cash. So this is where businesses generally go wrong, on a technical basis. There are other reasons. On a technical, ba on a technical business basis, they go wrong because they only got those two legs. They might do excellently well. Their sales rocket in the beginning. And before they, you know it, they've got the great house, the big cars, but they grow out of their business. They, their cash flow starts catching up with them. And, and the reason for that is they don't have the administration skills that they need. So always consider these three functions when you're planning your business. Okay. Not one of you will have three. Neither Donald Trump, nor uh, Richard Branson, you name any entrepreneur, not one of them can do this alone. Okay. Always, if they don't have one of these legs, they will hire in someone permanently or consultatively or so. Uh, mine, for instance, um, I really sucked as an architect, so uh, technically I had to get out of that, but I realized that my core skills are there with a larger leaning to here. So in my business, I don't try and be technical. Um, because I'm more administrative, I, I, I actually bring um, specialists in, in those fields to assist me in my business and to assist my clients. So knowing your weaknesses is important. Knowing your strengths is more important. Okay, and that's what you've got to focus on. You focus on your strengths, so if you're technical, uh, you're the back, if you're technically minded, rather get someone else to fill those other gaps for you, okay? Right. That's all I've got to say. Alright, let's move on to some team dynamics now. Okay, this is a bit of fun. Um, if you was any way uh, find it amusing, you can go to one minute millionaire.com. And you can do a little assessment of yourself. Five minutes, it's nothing serious. It's actually fun. Okay? 
But essentially, what you're going to find out is that you're going to be either a hare, or an owl, or a turtle, or a squirrel. Now, what do those things mean? So typically, your hare is your typical salesman, one of these guys. Right? I'm, yeah, I've got a deal here. Yeah. You know, he's an A-type uh, person. He sees no barriers. He's out there and he, he wins deals. Okay? Your owl is more a strategic person. Okay, so I hear that, but are there anything, is there anything else that you might want to do? So your owl will be more reserved than the hare, but can see the hare's point of view, okay? Or you can see the opportunity. The turtle uh, is a typical accountant. It's going to be resisting anything the hare says because they actually totally opposite. And so uh, when you've got a hare and a turtle as two business partners, they never get anywhere. Because the one comes up with a great idea and the other one says, no, it won't work. My wife and I are like that. Okay, so um, she's a turtle and, okay, I'm not a hare, but I'm more a hare than she is. And so uh, we can actually have conflict on the basis of I'm ready to move, but she isn't. Your squirrel is typically the person you can give them a task, and that's all they want, and they just do it. And essentially, um, when I assess a business very quickly, I try and identify the people in the business under those things. So I first will look at the black pot, and I say, say, do we have those skills covered? Generally, these would be more for leaders in the business. But this is your full team. And often, if you find all four of these uh, traits in your leadership, you find that the leadership that you get somewhere a lot quicker than other, than other teams. So this is just a quick methodology that if you have a team that consists of these four traits, that you can be 300% more effective in moving your company, or moving your idea, or moving your team along. So essentially what happens is this, uh, the idea here is this is a room, a meeting room. And so um, you've got the head, the owl, and the turtle together. Notice that the owl is in between the head and the turtle. So what the owl's doing is the head is coming with ideas and the turtle is um, there to be your check as to how relevant those opportunities might be or what problems they could be. But notice in this meeting, there are no negatives at all. So it's very difficult for the turtle to keep quiet in this case because he sees all the problems that the hare doesn't see. And that's where the owl has to be very um, open to sway from one side to the other side. But generally, the turtle is in this room to listen only, okay, not to speak. Now the owl takes all those things into context and says, all right, what are the different opportunities? And let's select what the priority ideas are. Okay. Notice that neither of those two can prioritize. Then the owl brings in the turtle and the squirrel. The squirrel obviously has to know what the work is that needs to be done. The turtle is going to throw water on the fire. So now the turtle brings out all the problems that are going to, that that opportunity cannot be accomplished. And so it's very important that eventually um, they're going to come to a solution and then Al now goes to the head there, he's on fire, you can see he's ready to roll. Okay, and he comes up with new ideas, how to overcome the hurdles that the turtle set. And they go back to the area editing again. These three are back there again. And then eventually they all agree, and then they get to work. The hair does the hair things. Generally, the hair will go and sell the opportunity or capture the opportunity. The owl will generally be managing that and translating what he's doing to the turtle so that the accountant can keep up with what the salesman's doing. And all the squirrels do is they just make him furniture, you know what I'm saying? So, um, 
The squirrels love the work. Okay, they just love the work. But they don't want to make any 